Hello everybody, this is Pastor Zach from Taylorville United Methodist Church, and I'm here with another daily devotional. Uh, we take some time out of the middle of every day, however busy or not so busy it might be, just to recenter ourselves on the Lord and remember what's truly important. And I can't think of any better way to do that than by spending some time reflecting and studying uh, God's scriptures that he's given us. Now, for the past few weeks, we've been going through the book of James, and we are right at the end. We only have a couple of days left studying this wonderful book that is so challenging for me and so many other people, and I hope that it's been valuable for you. If you need to go back and see some of the previous devotionals that we've done, we've pretty much broken it down verse by verse uh, from the beginning of the book, so you can go back and all of those are on our page. But just to do a quick recap for you, the book of James is all about the intersection of belief, which is what you think or what you know to be true, and action, which is what you do from one day to the next, and how at the intersection of those two things you find faith. We also know, and James proves, James drives home the point over and over and over again that belief and action are inseparable, that belief determines your actions, that the things that you know to be true, that you deeply believe and value, that's what's going to decide how you act, even when you don't have time to think. Your beliefs drive your instincts, they drive your decisions, they drive every part of your life. But it's also true that actions can impact and influence your beliefs over time. If you do something, that is against your better judgment, or if you do something that might conflict with a belief that you have, then over time your belief will start to shift to better align with your actions. We do this for a whole variety of reasons, but it's simple enough to say that we don't like the cognitive dissonance that comes from acting in a way that we don't necessarily agree with or that we don't necessarily like, and so we start to justify ourselves. And so that's what James has been talking about. That's what he's been focusing on from the very beginning. And because it encompasses both parts of our lives, our minds and our actions, we can say that faith is all-encompassing. It's kind of a holistic thing if you think about it. It affects every part of our life. It integrates mind and uh, action. And what we found is that James calls us to be intentional in every single part of our life. Because faith is holistic, because faith is all-encompassing, we have to be careful what we do because our actions can begin to impact our beliefs. And he calls us over and over and over again to holiness. So that brings us to this verse that we're looking at today. And we are just looking at one verse because it's kind of, it's an interesting one to be sure. And that's James 5, 12. And in it, he writes this, Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or earth or anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Well, this is a confusing passage. It's a good thing for us to reflect on why scripture says what it does. And the question that comes out of this is, why is it a big deal to swear on something? Now, keep in mind, this is not talking about uh, cursing or bad language. This is talking about making a vow. It's talking about making a promise, but tying that promise to something significant. And so if you swear by heaven, then essentially what you're saying is, by my honor in the eyes of God, I will do this. And if you swear by earth, you're saying, by my honor in the eyes of my neighbors and my peers and my friends, I will do this. Well, remember, faith is all-encompassing. And holiness starts to look a lot like integrity, which means it requires self-control. If we want to live a holy life, as James has described, then we need to be intentionally aware of our behavior in every part of life, and that includes 
the way that we make promises and the way that we make commitments. So when James says, do not swear, there's a couple of different things that are going on here. And it's worth noting that there are some Christian, uh, some parts of the Christian world that take this very literally and say, you should, you should not make a vow. You shouldn't make a promise. And the reasoning for that is often as simple as the Bible says so. And to be perfectly honest, that's not a bad reason to do anything. But it's good for us also to understand kind of at a deeper level what's happening. So first, James is saying that your integrity should make swearing unnecessary. You shouldn't have to make a vow uh, in order f for people to be confident that you're going to follow through on your word. If you're a person of faith and you're a person who lives a holy life, then when you tell somebody that you're going to do something, then you'll do it. You'll follow through. You will uphold your commitments because, as Scripture tells us, we do all things as though we're doing them for the Lord. But the second thing that we need to remember, and I think this is something we lose a lot in our present uh, society, is that a vow is something that's meant to be binding and significant. It's meant to have power. And when you make a vow in this way, the idea is that breaking a vow is wrong morally and ethically. It's sinful. It's unholy and unrighteous to break a vow. And the wisdom that comes from this is that when you make a vow, you have to follow through. And so the problem, and this is where the wisdom is, the problem comes when following through on a vow, following through on a promise, places you... Uh, or requires you to do something that's opposed to God's law. And if you'll remember, the law that we follow as Christians is the law of Jesus Christ, the law of love. So when you make a commitment to do something, and following through on that requires you to be unloving, that's when you have a problem, because no matter what you do, whether you side with God's law of love, or the vow that you took, you are falling out of holiness. You are committing a sin. You're doing something against righteousness. And so I think it's important for us to, to think about this. Because, to be perfectly honest, these kinds of vows, they don't come up very often in our society at the moment. But there is something to be said for us as Christians about our integrity about the fact that holiness encompasses even the commitments that we make, even the things that we tell other people we're going to do. Holiness is something that runs deep. It has its roots in every part of our lives, and so we need to be committed to taking that seriously. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you for the gift of today, this opportunity to study your word. Lord, I pray that you would bless each of us, that you would keep us safe, that you would give us strength to walk in your ways, that you would build within us a faith that leads to holiness, that leads to love of our neighbors, and God, that you would help us to remain as people who operate with integrity in every part of our lives. Lord, I pray that you would bless us today and each day, that you would keep us safe and well, that you would protect us and bless us in every part of our lives. Lord, I pray these things in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for being here today. I hope that uh, you have a blessed rest of your day. And just as a quick reminder, we do have some virtual small groups that are coming up, and you can find information about that on our Facebook page or on our website. Just go to taylorville-umc.org forward slash small hyphen groups, and that will get you to all the information that you need. So friends, go in peace with the love of Christ in your hearts and pursuing God in everything that you do. Amen.